Hi, my name is Ian Peterson and I'm a Government Affairs Intern at CARE Chicago. Today I'm going to be doing the first in a series of video blogs that look at racial profiling in America. And specifically today I'm going to look at the federal protection, or lack thereof, against racial profiling in the United States. Now the most basic protection that minority citizens have against racial profiling is the 14th Amendment of the Constitution, which basically gives every citizen of the United States equal protection under the law. However, there have been multiple Supreme Court cases over the years that have diminished this protection. Most notably in 1975 in the case brignoni Ponce versus the United States, the Supreme Court ruled that it is not unconstitutional for Customs and Border Patrol agents to stop someone near or at the border and search them based on race, ethnicity, or religion, specifically saying that Mexican appearance is enough to constitute a search. In Wren versus the United States in 2006, the Supreme Court also ruled that it is not unconstitutional for law enforcement agencies to make a traffic stop in, in order to investigate another crime. Now before, officers did not have the ability to do this because they did not have the pretext to make the stop and then investigate another crime. In addition to these Supreme Court cases, federal agencies such as the FBI, the TSA, and the CBP have all allowed guidelines to be passed within their agencies that allow racial profiling to occur. Despite all these troubling guidelines and rulings that have passed over the years, there have been attempts by the federal government to ban racial profiling nationwide. In 2003, President Bush supposedly banned racial profiling by issuing guidelines in 70 federal agencies. However, upon further inspection, these guidelines still allow for the use of racial profiling if the agency deems it necessary based on a potential threat. So basically, the guidelines are useless and were most likely an attempt by President Bush to gain minority votes in the 04 election. Now the closest that the federal government has come to passing nationwide legislation to ban racial profiling is the End Racial Profiling Act, also known as IRPA. IRPA was originally proposed in 2001 and was on the fast track to becoming law in the United States, but the events of 9-11 seemed to change the collective minds of Congress and it was not passed. Since then it has been proposed five different times, and most recently in 2010, and each time it has failed to become law. So despite the political rhetoric, before the Bush presidency he claimed that he was going to end racial profiling during his campaign, didn't effectively happen. Obama also issued statements in his blueprint for change saying he was going to end racial profiling nationwide and that didn't happen either so far. And the combination of this lack of legislation, the Supreme Court rulings, and the guidelines by federal agencies all allow for racial profiling to run rampant and unchecked pretty much within American society. And now you're probably wondering, does racial profiling actually occur and where's the proof that it occurs? Join me next time when I look at more specific examples of racial profiling in America.